Hi, I am Dr. Sakir Mansoor, and this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. And uh, today I am going to start with you a series of lectures on the bones of the lower limb. And the first of all is the lower limb bone, hip bone. This is the hip bone or the innominate bone, right? You could see these are the both views, the medial view and the lateral view with the acetabulum. And uh, the three parts of the bone are the ilium and the, this pubic portion, the pubic uh, part, and the, this is the ischium. And these three constitutes on both sides the hip girdle or the pubic girdle, right? So as we go on, these are the all the complete bones of the lower limb. This is hip bone and this is thigh bone femur. And leg bones, uh, this medially is the tibia and laterally is the fibula. And these are the foot bones. This is the anterior view. And this is a posterior view of all these complete bones of the, uh, the store limb. Uh, this is a 3D view of the rotating pelvis, which showing the both sides is um, hip bones, right? These are the hip bones. Here you could see again. This is the hip portion. This, this is the hip bone. This uh, bone here is the sacrum. This is the coccyx. And here you could see this is the femur. This is the head. And this is the trochanter, created trochanter, and the lesser trochanter. And this is the hip joint. It's already there is a um, video of mine on hip joint. These are the um, classical, beautiful pictures of this um, um, hip bones. Both views. This is the medial view and this is the lateral view. Always recognize the lateral view with that of the presence of the acetabulum over here, right? I describe all these things very soon. This is the gluteal surface on the lateral view. And on the medial view, this is the iliac fossa with the anterior superior iliac spine prominent over here. Here you could see another beautiful picture. This is the iliac fossa. This is the medial side. And this is the obturator foramen. This empty place space in the part of that part is the obturator foramen. This two foramen, the notch is the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch. I will describe these things beautifully very soon with the relevant pictures and the relevant text the powerpoint this is the iliac tuberosity right this is the and this is the auricular surface of the ilium for the sacroiliac joint this is the hip bone you see this is ilium this is pubis and this is the ischium right and again this is the innominate hip bone and the another name is the os coxy or the pelvic bone. The bone is constituted by three bones. Shown you already. They few these three bones fuse in a Y-shaped epiphysis that involve the acetabulum. This is the epiphysis Y-shape. This is the I mean, uh, limb and stem, and these are the limbs of the Y. This is the epiphysis Y-shaped. Here you could see this linear terminalis. It's a beautiful term, right? This is the, uh, you know, this is the ala of the sacrum. This is the sacrum bone. This, just follow the laser. This is the sacrum. This is coccyx. And this is the ala of the sacrum. This is margin of the ala. This is arcuate line, right? This portion of the ilium is called arcuate line. And this is pectin pubis, and this is a pubic crest, right? If you, as I go ahead on the description of the hip bone, I will elaborate these points. And these three parts, the arcuate line, the pectin pubis, and the pubic crest, they constitute the linear terminalis, right? This is uh, this is the pelvic inlet, upper pelvic aperture, pelvic inlet or pelvic prim, right? This is, here it is, this. Upper pelvic aperture, pelvic inlet or pelvic prim. 
this is the superior limb of the pelvic cavity and is bounded posteriorly by the promontory of the sacrum and the anterior border of the ala of the sacrum. Here you could see this. And laterally by the arcuate or iliopectineal line of the ilium. Iliopec part, part. This, this is there. This is the pectin pubis. And anteriorly by the pectineal line, the pubic crest and the superior margin of the pubic symphysis, the pubic part. This pubic symphysis and this is the pubic crest. Anterior two-thirds of the projecting ilium is a thin bone constituting the iliac fossa, which is a part of the posterior abdominal wall, right? So this you could see, this is the, uh, you know, uh, the iliac fossa, this portion, this hole. This is the anterior two-thirds of the projecting ilium, the thin bone. This is the iliac fossa, follow the laser, right? I have, this is the steric. And also known as a wing. Let me enlarge for you, I think, for the clarity purpose. Wing of ilium, which is the iliac fossa. You could see more vividly and clearly. It is so beautiful, is that? Posterior one third of the ilium is a thick bone. This posterior one third. This is interior two third, the wing. And this is the posterior one third, bears the auricular surface of the sacrum, auricular surface, right? And uh, behind this is a prolonged, very strong sacroiliac ligaments, which are bearing the body weight. And uh, zooming in again, this is the auricular surface of the sacrum. Yes, this, follow this hand sculpture. And posterior to that is the iliac tuberosity, right? Where the various ligaments are attached. This is the I'm an enlarged picture of that same one. Of course, I've shown already. This is again continuous. The bone outer surface of the ilium gives attachment to the buttock muscles. This is outer surface. And it gives rise to the buttock muscles, right? Like gluteus, gluteus, medius, minimus, etc. Ischium and pubius together are lying in approximately the same plane. The plane of the ilium is at about a right angle with this, right? This is the uh, angulation. The ischium and pubis together are lying in approximately the same plane. These are, This is the plane is the... Same and the ilium is plane is a right angle with this, right? I show the uh, will show you the anatomical position, and this will be more clear at that thing. Here you could see the um, this enlarged picture. The gluteal uh, lines are very visible. You could see, and uh, these are the gluteal lines. These this is the uh, you know gluteal line, um, the superior, middle, and inferior. This is again the obturator foramen below the acetabulum. This is the big, strong, ischial tuberosity. This is the lateral view. And this is the pubic tubercle. This I told you already, this is the acetabulum. This is the iliac crest. It has a very uh, particular anatomy, this iliac crest. We'll discuss soon. Now, the anatomical position of the hip bone, very, very important. Anatomical position of the hip bone. Here you could see this is a picture showing the anatomical position of the home, of the bone. And this is uh, the greater sciatic notch. And uh, we, when we hold the bone, um, if, if suppose if that, this is of the right side, we put your right hand in that, no, that very notch, the greater uh, sciatic notch. And uh, he, and this is a, a vertical plane and we keep these points, uh, you know, this uh, um, symphysial surface and uh, this anterior superior uh, iliac spine in one line with that. So let's read out anterior superior iliac spine and the interspurious aspect of the pubis lie in the same coronal plane, right? Symphysial surface of the pubis is vertical parallel to the median plane. 
So, in anatomical position, acetabulum faces in full laterally with acetabular notch directed inferiorly, right? Here you could see this. This is the anatomical position. You see that coronal plane. Uh, this is the acetabulum faces in laterally. And uh, this is the, you know, acetabular notch direction, told you already. Obstruator foramen lies in medial to the acetabulum. In medial to the acetabulum. This is the obstruator foramen lying in medial to this acetabulum. In medial. Internal aspect of the body of the pubis faces almost directly superiorly. Pelvic inlet, superior pelvic aperture is more vertical than horizontal. In the anteroposterior view, tip of the coccyx appears near its center. Here you could see this. This is the anatomical position. And uh, I told you this is the uh, pelvic inlet and uh, all that relevances. Lateral surface of the hip bone, socket of the hip joint, the acetabulum, the, from the Latin shallow vinegar cup is a concave hemisphere. Axis of the acetabulum is not strictly horizontal, but is directed also downward and slightly backwards along the axis of the femoral neck. There is a deficiency at its inferior margin, the acetabular notch. The hyaline cartilage lining the inside of the acetabulum is widest over the iliac part of the fossa. Opposite the notch, this is the weight-bearing area. So let's see. This is the acetabulum and here is the acetabular notch, right? This is, this is, uh, I've tried to tell you. This is acetabular notch, you could see. And this is the acetabulum. This is its lunate surface, right? This it is. And this is the margin, the limbus of the acetabulum. You could see this is the margin. Follow the laser. Articular cartilage does not cover the whole concavity and the non-articular bone is thin and translucent. Ischium and pubis meet here and their line of union continues down to notch. Ilium and pubis meet at the iliopubic eminence at the anterior margin of the acetabulum. Ilium and ischium meet at the corresponding low elevation just beyond the posterior margin of the acetabulum. Right? This is here. Yes. This is the ilium and this is the ischium. They meet here. And this is the pubis and this is the ilium and they meet here. Iliac crest. It's very important um, anatomical points here at Alia Crest. Here you could see this is the anterior superior leg spine and the crest going back till the posterior inferior leg spine. This is the anterior inferior leg spine. Convex upper margin of the ilium, the iliac crest extends from anterior superior leg spine to the posterior superior leg spine, right? It so extend this from anterior superior iliac spine to the posterior superior iliac spine. That is the anterior superior iliac spine, and this is the you know uh, our uh, posterior superior iliac spine. This so this and this this continuity is the iliac crest. Tubercle of the iliac crest is lying five centimeter behind anterior superior iliac spine and constitutes most lateral part of the pelvis, but not the highest part, which lies 7.5 centimeters behind this tubercle. It's not the highest point. This is the tubercle. So you could see, this is the anterior superior leg spine. As you go 5 centimeters behind, you will find the iliac tubercle, and the highest point would be 7.5 centimeters behind that uh, tubercle, right? Somewhere over here. Line between the highest points of two iliac crests, the supracrystal plane passes through spine of L4 vertebra. This is an important anatomical consideration. Tubercle is lying at the level of the L5 vertebra. This is also very important, this, this tubercle level. Here you could see this again. By manual palpation of anterior superior iliac spine used to determine position of the pelvic, the, the pelvic tilt, you could see this. This is the highest level of the iliac crest, as I told you before. And this is the supracrystal, supracrystal plane, right? 
And uh, this is the bimanual palpation. This is one hand. And here you could see this is tuberculum of the India crest of the tubercle. And uh, this is um, anterior superior iliac spine. This is the thumb and this is the fingers. And this is the other hand you could see so placed over here. So this is the determination of palpation of the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. This determines the position of the pelvic tilt. So now the gluteal surface of the ileum. Let's see. This is the gluteal surface. This is marked with these gluteal line superior, middle, and inferior. So these three curved gluteal lines, you could see these uh, lines uh, very, very clearly. This is one line. This is one line. This is the posterior gluteal line. This is the anterior gluteal line. And this is the inferior gluteal line, right? So very clear. Gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus take origin from this surface, and their sites of attachments are separated by these gluteal lines, right? Tensor fascia later uh, takes origin from gluteal surface a little below the iliac crest between the anterior superior leg spine and tubercle. Reflected head of fractus femoris takes origin from the upper margin of acetabulum, right? These are the muscles. So, first of all, this gluteus maximus over here, right? This uh, posterior gluteal line separates from the origin of the gluteus medius. This is a relatively wide origin from this uh, gluteal surface. And uh, posterior to all these, this is the, uh, you know, tensor fascia ladder also. This is the demarcation is medial, middle gluteal line separates this uh, gluteus medius from the tensor fascia ladder, right? Uh, this is the reflected head of the rectus femoris above the acetabulum and below these uh, gluteal lines, below this gluteal surface. Gluteal surface of the ileum continues. Anterior body, border of the ileum exhibits a gentle S bend. Anterior body, border of the ileum. Inguinal ligament and sartorius get attached to the anterior superior leg spine. So you could see anterior superior leg spine and this anterior border. This is a gentle bend, S-shaped, sinus-shaped bend, right? Like this. And uh, so the muscles which are being discussed at the state of the heart of the rectus femoris, uh, the, sorry, the inguinal ligament, the sartorius get attached to the anterior superior iliac spine. Here you could see this is the anterior superior iliac spine. And here is the now, you know, uh, this inguinal ligament and this is the sartorius muscle. I have put a sterics uh, myself to denote this muscles for ease, ease of description and spotting and uh, learning. Straight head of rectus femoris and iliofemoral ligament are attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine. Here you could see straight head of rectus femoris, right? Posterior border of ileum is rounded bar of bone lying between the posterior superior and posterior inferior spine. It provides attachment to the sacrotuberous ligament. Here you can see this, right? I will uh, show you the ligaments uh, picture later on, where only ligaments are shown. Here you could see this is the sacrotuberous ligament. This is right. This is the, of course, this uh, ischial tuberosity. That's when this is the sacrum. This is the sacrotuberous ligament. And this is the sacrospinous ligament. Posterior superior leg spine produces a characteristic dimple in the skin of the buttock at the level of the S2, second piece of the sacrum. This is also very important anatomical fact. So the iliac crest continues. Posterior part of the iliac crest is thicker than the rest. Posterior lamella of the lumbar fascia and the rectus spiny muscle gets attached here. Right over here, you could see this is the uh, iliac crest, and this is described being over here. Right. This picture is a lot, lot helpful. This is anterior superior iliac spine. 
and uh, here is the dash the tensor facial letter right and uh, this is medially is the you know transverse abdominis and in the middle is the internal oblique muscle and this is the external oblique muscle over here and this is the latissimus dorsi this is quadratus lumborum and here you could see this is gluteus maximus and the erector spinae this is posterior this is anterior this is median and this is lateral right this would be very, I could find only this beautiful picture, which I modified for you. This is, I told you already, the aponeurotic origin of the latissimus torsi gets fused with this posterior lamella and the muscle fibers get attached further forward along iliac crest, right? This is the latissimus torsi uh, getting attachment to the iliac crest, which is the bone of the, of course, lower limb and uh, going up for latissimus torsi has such a great extent that from it covers the entire back and goes up to the upper limb, which is attached to the upper limb bone, the humerus. Internal to the latissimus torsi, the quadratus lumborum and the iliolumbar ligament get attached to the iliac crest. So iliac crest continues. As we continue forward from here, there are the attachments of the internal oblique muscle and the transverse abdominus muscle side by side. Internal oblique to the center and the transverse abdominus to the inner lip of the crest, both extended to the anterior superior iliac spine. External oblique gets attached to the outer lip of the iliac crest in its anterior half and facial art of thigh gets attached along the whole length of the external lip of the iliac crest and splits to enclose the narrow origin of the tensor facial atom. This story I will already showed you the spotting over here. So this is the pubis. Now going coming to, to the pubis. Body of the pubis is quadrilateral in shape and is projected laterally as the superior ramus, which joins with the ilium and ischium at the acetabulum, and an inferior ramus which fuses with ischial ramus medial to obturator foramen. Here you could see this. This is the pubic crest. This is the body of the pubis. This is pubic tubercle. This is the superior ramus, and this is the inferior ramus of the pubis. Right. So this fuses with the um uh, ramus of the you know ischium right this is uh, this is and this conjointly are called the ischiopubic ramus these two rami the um, pubic and the ischium are called ischiopubic rami and this is the superior pubic ramus here uh, again i'm telling you this is lying the body of the pubis Symphysial surface of the pubis is oval shaped. It is coated with a layer of the hyaline cartilage, which makes a secondary cartilaginous giant that forms the pubic symphysis. Here you could see this. This is the symphysial surface of the pubis. Upper border of the body is gently convex and is called the pubic crest. On its lateral aspect, it is marked by a forward projecting prominence, the pubic tubercle. This is the pubic tubercle, right? you could see this this is this is also you could see this is the skill tuberosity we'll talk about the shim later this is the ischiopubic ramus right this is a pubic ramus this is a you know superior pubic ramus this is pubic tubercle this is from the lateral view this was from the medial view and this is the whole scenario this is the inferior pubic ramus right And pubis continues from pubic tubercle, two ridges diverge laterally onto the superior ramus. Upper ridge is sharp called the pectineal line. It constitutes part of the pelvic prim and joins with the arcuate line of the ilium. I've already shown you in the very start of the lecture, the iliopectineal line. Lower ridge is more rounded called the obturator crest. This crest passes downwards into anterior margin of the stabular notch where it becomes more conspicuous right this is the you could see this this is the crest the obturator crest here it is this is marked with aesthetic follow the aesthetic this is the obturator crest here you could see again in this beautiful picture the obturator crest you could see this right this is the inferior ramus this is body the superior ramus and this is the obturator crest the pubis 
Pubis continuous, it provides attachment to the pubofemoral ligament attached to the iliofemoral eminence, the superior pubic ramus, pituitary crest, and the obturator membrane. Here you could see this. This is a beautiful picture of the articulated pelvis with the ligaments, right? This is interior superior iliac spine. This is pubic symphysis, right? This is the sacrum, the hip bones. This is the sacrum. These are the hip bones, right? You could identify all the ligaments and why I wanted to show you pubofemoral ligament. Pubis continuous between these ridges, the surface of the superior ramus is traced laterally to its junction with ilium, and this junction is marked by a rounded prominence called iliopubic eminence. Below the obturator crest or pubic ramus lies the obliquely placed obturator groove. This groove which lodges the obturator nerve, which is in contact with the bone. Pectineus takes origin from the pectineal line and the adjacent surface of the superior ramus. Here you could see this. This is the iliopubic eminence. I told you this is the, you know, pubic. This is in pink color, red color. And this is the uh, bone color of the ilium. And this is at the junction is called as the iliopubic eminence. And this is the obturator groove, right? Which I told you already, which nerve passes through that and this whole story. Here you could see this is the pectineous muscle attachment to that. Pubis. Obturator vessels are lying below the obturator nerve as this neurovasculature bundle passes over obturator membrane. Right? An inferior ramus of the pubis spares an inverted crest. Line of junction of the inferior ramus of the pubis with ischial ramus is halfway between ischial fibrosity and the pubic crest. So this is iliopubic eminence. This is obturator groove. Pubis continuous. Pubic crest provides origin to the rectus abdominis and in front of it to pyramidalis. Lateral to this conjoint tendon gets attached to pubic crest and a long pectineal line. So you see this. This is the obturator crest again. And uh, here you could see, I wanted to show you, this is the our inguinal ligament, this is lacunar ligament, and uh, this is the pubic crest, this is pubic tubercle, this, this is the linear elbow, reflected part of the inguinal ligament, and this is the superficial inguinal ligament. Anterior to the conjoint end and the lacunar ligament gets attached to the pectineal line and lateral to this attachment of the pectineal ligament of the Cooper continues along pectineal line. I could find this uh, picture and this is the pectineal ligament and this is the lacunar ligament. Beautiful picture. Continues along pectineal line. To the pubic tubercle is attached the inguinal ligament that forms the lateral crust of the superficial ring in front of the conjoint end and the medial crust gets inserted in the front of the pubic crest alongside the pubic symphysis. So that is the, this is the reflected part of the inguinal ligament. This is the superficial inguinal ring. This is the inguinal ligament. Pubis continues, rounding tendon of adductor longus takes origin from the front of the body of the pubis in the angle between the pubic crest and the pubic symphysis. So this is the adductor longus, right? Bone spurs are at times present at the attachment. This is called as the rider's bone. Below it, the line linear origin of the gracilis muscle extends down along the margin of the everted crest of the Inferior pubic ramus to reach the skill ramus. Gracilis. So you could see this is the gracilis muscle. This is the gracilis linear origin. Deep to the adductor longus and gracilis adductor brevis takes its origin from the body of the pubis. This is the adductor brevis. You could see this. Follow the laser. Adductor brevis. This is the name. All the statics put to the Deep to the, this is uh, extended up, uh, extending up to along the inferior ramus. The pubic fibers of adductor magnus take origin deep to gracilis and deep still is obturator externus. So this is the you know adductor magnus. 
the big uh, part, right? And uh, this is wanted to show you. And this is obturated externus. Facial artery gets attached by its deep lamina to the pectineal line over the surface of the pectineus and below pubic tubercle along the front of the body of the pubis to the everted pubic crest. It encloses the adductor longus and gracilis and separates these muscles from the external genitalia in superficial perineal pouch. So a few words about the ischium. So ischium is an L-shaped bone, has an upper thick portion called a body that joins with the pubis and the ileum at the stibulum and extend down to the ischial tuberosity. This is the part of, this is the ischium in blue. This is the ischium forming this part of the acetabulum. And uh, this is the ischial tuberosity. The, this is a sitting bone, um, you know, this over uh, Ischium, this is the ramus. This is the ramus. This is the body. This is the body, and this is the ischial tuberosity. It supports the sitting weight, has a lower end medial thinner bar called ischial ramus that joins with the inferior ramus. We wish to enclose obturator foramen already described. Behind the acetabulum, a small elevation marks the line of fusion of ilium and ischium. Ischiofemoral ligament gets attached to ischium at the margin of the acetabulum. More medially upper part of the body of the ischium completes lower part of the greater sciatic notch. Sciatic nerve with the nerve to quadratus femoris deep to it lying here on ischium. This place of emergence of nerve into pubic buttox is lying one third of the way up from ischial tuberosity to the posterior superior iliac spine. Spine of the ischium is projecting medially to divide the greater from the lesser sciatic notch. Spine of the ischium, another important landmark. This is the ischiofemoral ligament, right? This is um, sp ischial spine. This is the thing, right? This separates the great sciatic notch from the lesser sciatic notch. Sacrospinous ligament gets attached to the spine and is contributes to convert the greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen. Sacrospinous ligament. Here you see it, sacrospinous ligament. Here, this is spine is of the ischium and this is the sacrospinous ligament and above that is the greater sciatic foramen. And uh, this is the lesser sciatic foramen. Prudendal nerve is lying on the sacrospinous ligament just medial to the spine. And internal prudendal vessel cross the tip of the spine when nerve to the obturator internus is lying on the base of the spine. Superior gemellus arises from the spine. Lesser sciatic notch is placed between the spine and the ischial tuberosity. The sacrotuberous ligament bridges it with which the sacrospinous ligament converts this notch into lesser sciatic foramen. I told you already, shown you. You could see this again. This is the greater sciatic foramen, and this is the lesser sciatic foramen converted by the this is sacrospinous ligament, which is getting attached to the ischial spine. This you could see also over here. This is the ischial spine, and it converts the greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen. The less sciatic notch into less sciatic foramen. Here you could see this is P is the piriformis. This is the direction of the piriformis. And above that is the greater sciatic foramen, right? And this is the lesser sciatic foramen. And the piriformis is the key to that foramen. Structures passing above uh, that are given the name of the superior, like superior gluteal vessel and the inferior one are the inferior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal vessels, etc. Main nerve passing through that is the sciatic nerve. Direction of obturator internus is like this. Ischium. Obturator internus emerges through lesser sciatic foramen into buttock and internal pudendal vessel and nerve travel forward into perineum. Lesser sciatic notch gets grooved by tendinous fibers on deep surface of muscle 
which are separated from the bone by the hyaline cartilage and a bursa inferior gemellus takes origin from the upper margin of ischial tuberosity above hamstrings. Here you could see this inferior gemellus. This is the superior gemellus. These are the two gemelli. And this is the obturator internus. I have enlarged the picture for the purpose of the clarity and the beautifulness. This is a great, I told you, I described it already. Ischial tuberosity is a rugged prominence. Its convex posterior surface gets divided transversely by a small ridge. You could see it by over here, right? This you could see. This is a ischial tuberosity. This is a ridge. This is tibian. Here you could see the palpation of the ischial tuberosity, right? And here is, I think this is a more beautiful division. This is this is the shield tuberosity, and uh, these this is a transverse line divide, dividing it into upper part and the lower part, and the lower part has a longitudinal ridge, the upper part has an oblique ridge, and the superior most this is a semi membranosis getting attached from from it, and uh, below the oblique ridge from the Upper to the transverse ridge is the semi tendinosis and long head of the biceps, right? And here you could see this is the longitudinal ridge, and uh, this is the you know lateral to that is this muscle, the adductor magnus. The chiller. This picture is a beautiful, a most beautiful, and it elaborates everything about the shield of the attachments. I've told you already this, so I will not go through that uh, reading. Facial data to the thigh gets attached to this stage. Ischium, lateral bevel surface here provides the origin to the fibers of the hamstring part of the adductor magnus. Medial bevel surface receives sacro tuberous ligament, ischial tuberosity curve forward from rugged weight bearing part into thin ischial ramus adductor magnus muscle has a continuous origin along the ramus for pubic part this is let me enlarge now for that this is the adductor magnus this is the adductor bavis this is the gracilis this is obturator externus and here is the adductor magnus I was talking about this chill tuberosity and the ischium. So this is the adductor magnus. Obturator foramen. Obturator foramen is ringed by a sharp margin, the pubis and the ischium. The margin of the pubis overlap each other to form the obturator groove. Obturator, let's see again the obturator foramen for clarity. This is obturator foramen. This below the acetabulum. This gap in the membrane is the bone, is the obturator foramen. Obturator membrane gets attached to the margin of the foramen, not to the obturator groove. Obturator external takes origin from the outer surface of the obturator membrane and the anterior bony margin of the obturator foramen. Obturator internus takes origin from the inner surface of obturator membrane and the bony margins of obturator. Foramen. And uh, yes, going on. Medial surface of the hip bone. The pelvic rim is constituted by the top of the pubic crest. I showed you already. This is the pelvic rim. Here you could see this. This is the promontory, and this is the anterior uh, part. This is of the promontory and pelvic prim is um, constituted by top of the pubic crest. You could see this is the pubic crest, pectineal line. This is, this is the pectineal line at the pectin pubis and the rounded border of the ilium called the arcuate line. This is the arcuate line. This is the anterior part of the uh, this um, pelvic brim, top of the auricular surface. This is the top of the auricular surface. Pelvic brim is curved and slopes up at 60 degree to the horizontal plane. 
60 de degree to the horizontal plane. Below the brim is lying the pelvic cavity and above it is the iliac fossa and the abdominal cavity. Right? This is the iliac fossa and below it is the pelvic cavity. Medial surface of the hip bone auricular area is extended, extending from the pelvic brim to the posterior inferior iliac spine. This is the medial surface. Its uh, surface undulates and is roughened by many tubercles and depressions. It articulates with the L of the sacrum. The anterior sacroiliac ligaments gets attached to its sharp anterior border. So auricular area. This is the auricular area, ear-shaped, um, extending from the pelvic brim to the posterior inferior iliac spine. Here you could see this. Its surface undulates and is roughened by many tubercles. It articulates with the ala. I told you already. Iliac fossa is a gentle concavity lying in the ala of the ilium, ilium in front of the sacroiliac joint. This is the iliac fossa. Big thing. Its deepest part lies high in the fossa and is made up of the paper thin translucent bone. This you could see the luminancy, the transparency of this. This is very transparent, very thin over here in the middle, in the deep. Iliacus muscle takes origin from the top two thirds of this area down to the level of the anterior inferior iliac spine. Let's see the iliacus. I'll show you later on. Lower one third of the iliac fossa is separated by a large bursa from overlying iliacus. Fibers of the iliacus converge to travel in a broad groove between the iliopubic eminence and the anterior inferior iliac spine. Medial surface of the hip bone, iliac fascia, covers the iliacus and the swass gets attached around the margin of the muscles to the iliac crest, to the arcuate line and the iliopubic prominence. Swass major muscle travels freely along the pelvic brim and crosses the eminence deep to the iliac fascia. Swass bursa has deep to it the iliac bursa as already discussed. Levator ni gets attached to the junction of the body and the inferior mus on the inner surface of the pubis. More medially, the puboprostatic, the pubovesical in the female ligaments get attached at this level. Inferior ramus is lying on the perineum. Immediately below the symphysial surface, the arcuate pubic ligament gets attached. The deep dorsal vein of the penis of the clitoris in female is lying in the middle line below it, extending below from symphysial surface along the pubic ramus. There is a ridge of bone which gives attachment to the perineal membrane. You could see the muscle I wanted to show you. This is the iliac fossa and this is the iliacus muscle attached. Right? And uh, this is the here iliolumbar ligament. This is the dorsal sacroiliac um, ligament. This is the rectus spiny. And this is the introsial sacroiliac ligament. This is the auricular surface. That is a little bit of story. And also this levator and I, you could see this. This is the levator and I muscle. This is the cross of the penis. This is the colis fascia. This is the skeuocaval nosis attached. And this is the perineal membrane over here. And this is the levator and I, various parts. This is the levator and I muscle, various parts. Iliococcygeus, pubococcygeus, and puborectalis. These are all these follow the laser parts of the vitreous eye. Medial surface of the hip bone continues external to this. The margin gets inverted into the crust of the corpus cavernosum, and ischiocavernosus muscle get attached here between the perineal membrane and the obturator foramen. The ischiopubic ramus constitutes the wall of the anterior recess of the ischioanal fossa. Sphincter urethra gets attached here above the perineal membrane. Again, you could see this. To describe the whole surface. This is the cross penis. This is colis fascia, distorted line. And this is ischiocavernosis. And this is the perineal membrane. Inner surface of the body of the ischium. 
it is smooth obturator internus takes origin from body of the ischium and the area above it up to the arcuate line on ilium the pelvic brim and as far as back as the margin of the greater sciatic notch as well as from the obturator membrane and the ischiopubic ramus fascia over the obturator internus gets attached to the bone at the margin of the muscle if this is the inferior gemellus, superior obturator internus told you already and uh, Going on, obturator internus fascia gets split to form the prodendal canal just above falciform ridge on the ischial tuberosity. The ridge curves forward from the tuberosity onto the ischial ramus. The falciform process of the sacro tuberous ligaments gets attached to it. Transverse muscles of the perineum get attached at the anterior edge of the ramus. It's elevated and either the coccygeus get attached to the inner surface of the ischial spine. This is the levator and I. This is the greater ischial tuberosity. Levator and I. Right? This is the ischial tuberosity. This is the pubic. And this is the levator and I. This was also the anterior fibers. And I was concerned over here with the posterior most fibers of the levator and I being attached to this part of the bone over ischium. And uh, this is the coccygeus. Now, the sex differences in the uh, male and female uh, hip bones. All of the ilium is drawn out to widen the pe female pelvis. Greater sciatic notch is near at a right angle in the female, much less in the male. Female bone may have a pre-auricular sulcus below the arcuate line. Female ischial spine is lying in the plane of the body of the ischium. Male, male spine gets inverted towards pelvic cavity. Female obturator foramen is triangular in shape. Male obturator foramen is oval in outline. Distance from the pubic symphysis to anterior margin of the acetabulum is greater than diameter of the acetabulum in female, equal or less in male bone. Here you could see this is the male pelvis and this is the female pelvis. You see this is the broad one. Ossification. Bone develops in cartilage. Three primary centers appear, one for each bone near the acetabulum. Center for the weight bearing ilium appears first in the second month, followed by ischium in the third month, and pubis in the fourth month of the fetal life. At birth, the, fetum, feet, the acetabulum is totally cartilaginous. Ilium is a broad blade of bone, and the ischium and pubis are th tiny bars of the bone buried in the cartilage. Growth of these three bones causes them later to approximate each other when via Y-shaped triradiate cartilage in acetabulum. This is the uh, triradiate cartilage. You could see this is the one, two, and three limbs. This is the cartilage, triradiate cartilage. This is the epiphysis of iliac crest. This is ilium. This is ischium. This is the epiphysis. And this is the pubis. Ascial and pubis cremae get fused with each other at about age seven years. Secondary centers for the education tend to appear in the uh, acetabular cartilage at eight years, and by the 18 years of age, ossification across the acetabulum is complete. Other centers of ossification occur in the cartilage around the periphery of the bone, and these get fused with the main bone by 25 years. Little or no trace of lines, fusion of the primary bones is visible in the old age. Although bony components are fused rigidly, their names are still used in the adults to describe three parts of the pelvic bone. I thank you very much um, for listening and watching to my video. And stay tuned for the very uh, soon I will give you the um, anatomy of the femur. And let's like and comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.